Hi, this is a quick video on how to make a bar graph. And you might be using bar graphs or reading bar graphs throughout the semester. Let's take a quick look at the elements that are necessary for making a bar graph. Uh, first of all, let's set up some uh, lines here that will represent the y-axis and the x-axis. And for today's graphs, you're going to be graphing the data from uh, your data from the time it took at different temperatures for the reaction to occur. So here's some examples. Uh, I, I kind of just made up these data for you. Uh, they're not data that you should use when you're collecting data. Again, I just made this up. Um, but let's take a look at that and use this to help us make our graph. So we need to set up our x-axis, and the x-axis is going to be your independent variable, which in this case is temperature. And since it's a bar graph, we don't really have to be super careful about um, uh, how far apart our units are. Our temperatures are at 5 degrees Celsius, 22 degrees Celsius and 45 degrees Celsius. So on here, I'm just gonna write five degrees C and you should always write your units along with whatever your variable is. Um, and then here I'll write 22 degrees C and here I'll write 45 degrees C. Notice that I'm using up a huge amount of space on my graph paper, and I definitely encourage you to do that. I, making tiny little graphs is not a good idea. Using up the space is a good idea. So the next thing that we're gonna do is set up our y-axis, and our y-axis is, is time. So we're just gonna write time like this, and then our units are minutes and seconds. Oops, that should be an S, a seconds minutes and seconds. So um, so when we write our time on here, we'll write it in the form of minutes and seconds. Uh, notice that the highest amount of time is two minutes and 45 seconds. And if we were just to do like one minute, two minute, right, then that would, that our bars would be really, really small. And it would be hard to tell the difference between our data. So I'm going to suggest that when you're setting your axis scale for your Y axis, you pick a time that reflects something that's going to be easy for us to tell the difference between these very subtle times. So I think I'm going to use 10 second intervals. So 0, 10, then you know, 0, 20, 0, 30. Now you don't have to write it every single line, so I could skip 40 and I could do 0, 50 here. I would put one minute there, so that would be 1, 0, 0 for 60 seconds. And then, again, you don't have to write it on every single line, so I could go 1, 20, 1, 40, 1, oh, 160 would actually be 2 minutes, so we can change that to 2 minutes. And then 2, 20, 2, 40, and then 260 would be 3 minutes. So that's pretty good use of the space available in front of you. I, I could have done it every five seconds and it would have been twice as big, uh, but this makes sense to me. So we're going to graph um, our data first here at 5 degrees C. It was 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So the, if you go up to here, you can see that 2 minutes and 30 seconds is right here. So we can make a bar. And again, I'm going to use a ruler to help me make a very nice pretty graph like that. That's my data. Like so. Um, and then the class average was 2 minutes and 45 seconds. So that's 230, 240, that's 250. So it would be like right here right in that area. So if you take that up to there and you go over and I'm and I'm just using two spaces for each. And I'm not coloring anything in yet or shading anything in yet. We'll get to that in a second. So the next set of data for your data is 
two minutes and their class average was two minute, one minute and 45. So two minutes is right here and we're doing the 22 degrees C1. So right here. And then again, making sure that the graph is nice and tidy like that. Um, the class average was one minute and 55 seconds, which would be right here. And then for the 45 degree one, it was at 45 seconds. So this is 30, this is 40, so this would be 45 seconds. And for the class average, it was 50 seconds. So we, I mean, I'm telling you verbally that these are your data and these ones are for the class average. But when you're doing a graph, um, you should have a key. So you can shade them in. I'm just doing this really quickly. You should always make things pleasant to look at, right? Something easy to read. So you can just make a little key right here that says, this is my data, right? My data. And then you can pick another color and do, right, this one is for the class average. So that's how to make a quick and easy bar graph comparing the three temperatures with uh, separate data from your average versus the entire class average. Uh, and there you go. If you have any questions about how to make a, a better graph or what your teacher's expectations are, make sure you're in contact with them about this.